At the start of my pre-trip inspection, the first thing I'm going to check is I'm going to make sure my DOT sticker is in date. We'll check for proper paperwork, make sure I have the right fuel permits, registration, proof of insurance, make sure I have my emergency response guidebook. I'll check my fire extinguisher, make sure my fire extinguisher is at the proper charge. and ensure that I have three triangles inside my case. Once I've completed that, I'll enter the cab. Now, as I enter the cab, one of the first things that I'm going to inspect is going to be my windshield and my mirrors. When I look at my windshield, I'm looking for cracks rock dings, anything that's going to obstruct my field of view or make the windshield unsafe. Now also inspecting the cab, let's not forget our seat belt assembly. We want to check the seat belt, make sure that it latches properly and that it is secured. Make sure it releases properly and that it retracts back up and into the stow position. I'm going to look at my mirrors, I'm going to inspect each mirror for visible damage and adjustment. So I'll check each mirror for damage and check and make sure that each one adjusts and make sure that it's properly adjusted for me. Put my key in, turn the key on. I'll check my gauges, make sure all of my gauges do the proper sweep checks. I'm going to go over the individual gauges and what we're looking for on each gauge. Starting from left to right, you have your engine oil temperature. Some trucks are equipped with a temperature, some are not. Your DEF fluid level works in a company with your actual diesel fuel level. Um, you want to make sure that you keep both of them you know, full appropriately. Your DEF, you should get three tanks per one full tank of fuel. Your water temperature, your operating temperature is usually around 185 degrees. It can heat up to about 200, 205 before your fan kicks in. And as long as it cools back down when your fan kicks in, everything is fine there. Your actual oil pressure, it varies from, from engine type. Usually around 35 to 40 PSI at an idle is what you're looking for. Fuel level, um, as all of your gauges when you turn your ignition key on, if you watch them, they do a sweep test. Make sure they all pass the sweep test appropriately. Your voltmeter. When the truck is running, you should be charging between 13.5 and 15 volts. Anywhere inside of that window is fine. Your brake pressures. We went through the brake test of showing you how to check your air warning buzzer and to make sure that your pop-off valve is cutting out at 125 PSI. When it's doing that, those are working properly and make sure that your gauges are working properly. I will check my windshield wiper Assembly and operation, check my fluid, make sure my fluid's working. Okay. I'm going to start the vehicle up. Make sure my oil pressure rises. And make sure that my air pressure is built up and that my, my pop-off valve operates properly and, and kicks off at 125 PSI. We just heard it pop. I'll go back and shut the engine down. Um, messaging. Turn my ignition key back on. You have six sun red messages. Release my parking brake. Um. And apply my service brake. I should have approximately about 10 PSI drop applying the service brake. And after that, I'm going to check and make sure that nothing else drops. I should hold pressure. From that point, I'm going to bleed my pressure down to make sure that my air warning buzzer is working properly. Air warning buzzer is working properly. Bleed it on down to make sure the tractor protection valve is working. Tractor protection valve is working. I'll start the vehicle back up and build my air pressure back. 
As I'm doing that, I check my operation of my fans, make sure my defrost is working. Voltmeter, I check, make sure my truck is charging. Make sure my fuel level is good. From 13.5 volts to 15 volts is optimum uh, charging point of what we're looking for. As I'm building pressure up, I'll also check that every truck is equipped differently. Some trucks have a fifth wheel slide and some don't. The ones that have it, I will check the operation of the slide and make sure that it is working. If it's equipped with a suspension dump, I will check the suspension dump, make sure that it is working. All of your trucks should be equipped with a power divider lock and unlock. We'll check and make sure your power divider is locking and unlocking. You just heard your pop-off valve again, so we know that our air is building up. We'll oh, shut the engine back down. Again. Turn my ignition key on. You have six sun red messages. Turn my lights on. And my hazards, and we'll get out and do a complete walk around to check the lights. The last part of my cab inspection, then we'll get out and do a complete walk around and check operation of all of my lights. As I exit the cab, I see the cab turn signal and marker light. I'm going to check it and move from there around to the front of the vehicle. I'm going to check the operation of my headlights, make sure both of my headlights are working. Check the lenses and make sure the lenses are not broke or cracked and allowing water in. Check both turn signals, make sure both turn signals are operational on each side. As I stand in front of the vehicle and you look up to your cab clearance lights, you're going to ensure that all of your cab clearance lights are working. From there, I'll move around to the left side of the cab. As I come around to the left side of the cab, I have another cab marker light with a turn signal. I'm going to check the operation of that. And at the same time that I'm doing this light inspection, I'm inspecting the body of the truck and the trailer, and I'm looking for any kind of physical damage that's going to make this truck unsafe to be on the road. I'll work down to the trailer. As I come to my top clearance light on the trailer, I'm going to make sure that it's there and that it's working. Move along to the middle of the trailer, where you have your underneath turn signal and marker light. I'm going to check and verify proper operation and mounting of it, and I'll move from here to the back of the trailer. When I get to the back of the trailer, I have a marker light on the, on the end of it that I'm going to check the proper operation of it and make sure it is working. As I come around the back of the trailer, we'll check all of your clearance lights along the top of the back of the trailer and make sure all of them are operating properly. Both turn signals and all of your tail light assemblies. Now you cannot check your brake lights by yourself so you get the assistance of another driver if you can to check your brake light applications. Um, while you're back here also, you'll notice you have a light on your license plate. Check it and make sure that it's in operation. And we'll come around the left side of the trailer. When you come around the left side of the trailer, you have another marker light. Check the operation of that. And you have an ABS light. Now your ABS light should not be illuminated. If it is, you have a fault in your ABS system. You have another turn signal and marker light that you want to ensure proper mounting of it and operation. You have one more top clearance light on the side of your trailer. And here you can also check the operation of your work light on the back of your cab. But from this point after I completed my light inspection, I'm going to come raise my hood and start with my inspection right here on the left steer tire. Now as I'm checking my left steer tire, the first thing I'm going to look at is the tread for the tread depth, but also for irregular wear to make sure that it's wearing evenly and that there's not any physical damage to the tire. I'm going to check the tire pressure on the steer tire. It should be 105 PSI cold. I'm going to look at all of my lug nuts and make sure that they're not loosening up, showing signs of rust where they're coming loose from the bottom. If you pop your cap off of your oil, check and make sure you have hub oil in there, that it's at the proper level. From there, I'm going to move into the left side of the engine compartment, where I'm going to look at my power steering fluid level. I'm going to check my fan belt for chafing, for cracking, or for, 
fraying or anything or any kind of damage on it. On trucks that are equipped with a standard transmission, I would have a reservoir here for my clutch that I would check the fluid level on it. Pull your dipstick from your engine oil. Check your engine oil level. Make sure that I have the appropriate amount of engine oil. And as I'm doing this on the engine, I'm also visibly looking for any kind of class three leak, whether it be fuel or oil on the engine. Now as I'm inspecting the area around the left steer tire, I'm gonna inspect your drag link and pitman arm assembly. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the drag link and I'm gonna to try to move it. And I'm gonna check the two for plate. There should not be any. I'm gonna look and visually inspect my brake air lines and make sure there's no chafing or rubbing on them and look at the liner on my brake shoes and make sure that they're not getting too low. Now you can't, most drivers don't have the ability to measure the brake liner and know where it's at. You just keep an eye on it and if it looks like it's low, notify maintenance and let them look at it and, and make the judgment if it needs to be replaced or not. From there, I'm gonna move around to the right steer tire and the right side of the engine compartment. Now as I approach the right side of the vehicle, I'm gonna start with the right steer tire. And just like the left steer, I'm gonna start with the same place at the tread depths and, and tread wear and make sure that it's wearing evenly and that there's not any damage to the tire itself. I'm gonna check all my lug nuts. Good indicator of a loose lug nut is looking for signs of rust coming from underneath the lug nut. And check the tire pressure. Steer tire should be at 105 PSI. I'm gonna check my hub oil and make sure that there's proper level of oil in the hub. And I will move from there to the right side of the engine compartment. I'm going to check my coolant reservoir for a proper level of coolant. I'm going to look at this side of my fan belts and of my AC belt and make sure I don't have any fraying or chafing on the belt. I'm going to visually inspect this side of the motor for any kind of oil leak, a class 3 leak that needs to be identified or addressed. My windshield washer reservoir, I'm going to check and fill it appropriately. And I'll move from there to the inside of the right steer tire area. I'm gonna look at my brake lines and inspect them and make sure that they're not chafing, rubbing, any kind of damage to them and to the inside of the brake system and look at the brake liner on it and make sure that my brake liner is not too worn. Now as I'm moving right down the right side of the cab, one of the things I'm looking for is I'm gonna check and make sure that my fuel cap is present and that it's secured and tight. As I work down the right side of the vehicle, most of our trucks are equipped with a, an auxiliary power unit or APU. There's not a whole lot to inspect here, but what I will look for, I will look at, at the belts, both the water pump belt and the generator belt to make sure that they're not broken or frayed. Pull your dipstick and verify and make sure you have the proper amount of oil, the engine oil. It's important that when you're through with this, make sure that your cover is secured so you don't lose it going down the road. Once I've finished with the APU, I'm right here, I'm gonna check and make sure that my quarter fender assembly is present and tight. And I'm gonna to move to the, to the front drive tires on the passenger side. Same as your steer tires, I'm gonna check the tread depths and for irregular wear, make sure there's no damage in the tire, both inside and out on these. And I'm gonna check the tire pressures. And on your drive tires, your tire pressure should be 100 PSI cold. If you look right inside, you can get a good view of your brake liner and of your brake air lines. And as the steer tire is the same, you want to look and make sure that they're not chafing and rubbing, and you want to make sure that your liner is serviceable. If you look up here, you'll see the, the right side of your fifth wheel. You want to check and make sure that your mounting bolts are, are tight and that your fifth wheel slide is locked out into place. Also, on your drive assembly, you want to check your, your springs and make sure your spring mounts are there and that your U-bolts on the axle itself is tight and in place. Also on your drive tires, and every tire, you have an airbag and a shock assembly on your drive. I'm gonna check the airbag and make sure that it's secured and that it's aired up and present. I'm gonna grab the shock and I'm gonna check and make sure the shock is secured and present and visually inspect the shock and make sure there's no oil coming from the shock itself. I would move from there to the rear drive on the passenger side and it's pretty much the same thing. I'm gonna inspect the same things that I did there. 
I'm going to look at the tread depths and for irregular wear first. I'm going to check my air pressures and we'll make sure that they're 100 PSI cold. As I'm inspecting it, I'm also going to look at the lug nuts and I'm going to make sure that all of our lug nuts are present. I'm going to check around the lug nuts for deposits of rust. It's a good indication that your lug nuts are loose. Now on your rear drive tires and drive axle assembly, you also have an airbag and a shock on each side of it. So I'm going to reach in and grab that shock and make sure that it's secured, visually inspect it and make sure there's no oil coming from it. You're going to grab your airbag and make sure your airbag is secured and that it's not damaged. Each side of your drives and each side of both of your trailers have an airbag assembly and a shock that would need to be inspected. I'm going to come back, I'm going to inspect my brake liner, slack, adjuster, uh, slack adjusters in the brake lines, and I will make sure that my mud flap and reflector is in place. At that point, I would be done with the drive tires on the passenger side. Now, as I approach the, the left rear drive of the tractor, the first thing I'm going to notice, I'm going to look at my mud flap assembly. I'm going to make sure that my mud flap is present, not damaged, and that my reflector is present. If you work underneath the tractor, you can gain access and see the brake liner, your shock assembly, and your brake chambers and lines. On the tire itself, like the other tires, you're going to check your, your tread depth, and you're going to check for any irregular wear or damage to the tire. Check your lug nuts, make sure all your lug nuts are present and tight. And on your drive tires, you're going to set each of your air pressures at 100 PSI cold. Move around the front of the tire. You can see your spring assembly. You're going to check it for any obvious damage. If you lean in and look, and you're going to make sure and verify that your U-joints are present and not damaged. You can also see from right here, you can see the, the left side of your fifth wheel assembly. There again, you're going to check and verify and make sure that your slider mechanism is locked in the out position. Your handle, make sure that it is not bent or damaged. And check all your mounting bolts and make sure that they're present and tight. From there, I would move to the left side front drive assembly and do the same inspection on these tires. I'm going to check the tread depths. I'm going to check for irregular wear and damage to the tire. I'm going to verify and make sure that they're set at 100 PSI cold. I'm going to check all of my lug nuts and make sure that they're tight and that they're not damaged. Stick your head right inside. You're going to verify your brake liner and make sure that it is not unserviceable. Come around the front of it and you can see your brake chamber and your brake air lines and inspect them. As you're walking around the trailer, all four sides of your trailers, you want to check your side panels for structural damage. You want to check your, your Avert Express decals, make sure they're serviceable, and inspect all your DOT tape, and make sure that it's there. All four sides also should have two placards. You want to make sure that they're intact and that they're not damaged. Now, as I'm coming down the passenger side of the trailer, I'm going to inspect my brake air lines and wiring harness, make sure that all of my hangers are in place and that the brake lines are secured. As I'm working down, I'm going to inspect my, my tandem slides, make sure that the pins are locked out and that the slides are not broken or missing. I'm going to inspect my brake chambers and air lines and make sure that they're not broken, rubbing, or chafing. I'm also going to inspect the brake liner and make sure that the brake liner is serviceable. And I will move around to the front and check the actual tires themselves. There again, I'm checking for tread depth or irregular wear and any kind of damage that would make the tire unserviceable. As I'm checking the, the trailer tires and the treads, I'm going to come around the front and I'm going to check all your lug nuts and make sure the lug nuts are present. There again, as I said before, I'm going to look for rust, any, any sign that the nut may be loosening up. Some of your trailers like this one are equipped with an auto inflate airline. With these tires, you can't check the actual pressure, you want to just verify that the tire is inflated. Now if these wouldn't present, you would have two tires that you want to check and as your drive tires on the truck, it's 100 PSI cold. From here I'll move to the rear trailer tires. And the same thing, I'm going to check the tread for irregular wear, the tread depths, and any, any kind of damage to the tire. I'm going to check the lug nuts again. 
make sure they're all present. And I will move around to the back of the, of the tire where I can gain access and see the brake liner, the brake chamber, and the brake hoses. And there again, inspect them just like I did the front one for any kind of damage that would make it unserviceable. While I'm here, I'm gonna make sure that my mud flap is present and that it's not damaged. Check my rear tandem slide pin, make sure it's out and make sure the slider is in place and not damaged. And that would complete the passenger side of the trailer. Now, as I come around the rear of the trailer, first thing I'm gonna inspect, I'm gonna inspect my bumper and make sure that it's not broken or any of the welds are broken, that it's not bent up and it's serviceable. I'm gonna check my doors, I'm gonna look at all of my hinges and make sure my hinges are not damaged or broken and that my door latches are present and not broken. Now this trailer's loaded and it's ready to go. If it was not, if it was empty, I would open the doors checking the actual latch operation and I would enter the trailer, walking through the trailer, checking the roof and make sure there's no damage to the roof. Another important thing to check on the rear of your trailer, you're gonna notice you have DOT reflective tape on the bumper and on the doors, top and bottom. You want to inspect your tape and make sure that it is present and that it is not obstructed from view or damaged. Now, as I come back around the left side of the trailer, the first thing that I'm going to come to is going to be my mud flap. There again, I'm going to make sure that it's present and that it's secured. And I'm going to work underneath the trailer to where I can get a visual inspection and make sure my brake liner is serviceable, checking my brake chamber and my brake air lines and making sure that they're all serviceable, not broken or chafed. I'll come back around the front to my rear trailer assembly on the tires. The first thing I'm gonna look at is I'm gonna see the, the tandem slide pin, make sure it's locked out, and that my slider assembly is not bent, broken, or missing. I will check the tire itself for the tread wear, the tread depth, make sure there's no damage to the tire. I will check all of my lug nuts and make sure that they're present and not loose. There again, this, tailor, or this uh, trailer is equipped with an auto inflate system on these tires. If it wasn't, I would verify and make sure that I had 100 PSI cold on the tire. Come to your uh, tandem release handle, make sure it's stowed and locked in. Up to my front locking pin on the slider and make sure it's locked out and in the correct position. Make sure my slider mechanism is not broken or bent or missing. I will check my front tires for tread wear, depth, or any kind of damage to it. Check my lug nuts, make sure all of my lug nuts there again are present and tight. From there, I would move around the front of the tire to where I can see the front left brake chamber and air lines and make sure that they're not damaged and that they're all present. Check my front brake liner and make sure my brake liner is serviceable. And that would complete your trailer tire inspection. And I would move from here down the right side of the trailer. Now, as you're walking around the trailer, you want to check your placard holders. There should be two placard holders on each side of the trailer. You want to inspect them, make sure they're present, that they're not damaged. As I approach the dolly leg, I'm going to look for any visible damage on the dolly leg. I'm going to verify that both shoes are present. I'm going to check the handle. Check the operation of the dolly leg. Make sure that they raise it, raise and lower. Check your cross supports and make sure there's nothing broken or, or damaged on them. I will check the quarter fender. Make sure that it is present, not damaged, and make sure that it is tight and secure. While I'm here. I'm gonna look at the DOT sticker on the trailer and make sure that it is up to date, make sure it's present, make sure that my registration for the trailer is present. Remove your coiled airlines. Ensure your coiled airline grommets are present and not damaged. You will have one on the, on the glad hand for the truck and one on the glad hand for the trailer. I'm going to inspect my cold air lines themselves and make sure that they're not damaged, make sure my hanger is present and that my pigtail is serviceable and not damaged. If I have a spare tire assembly on the truck, I'm going to ensure that the spare tire is, is secured. 
I'm also going to verify the trailer number and ensure that I have the proper trailer. And that would complete the pre-trip inspection.